So welcome back to Digital Marketing from the Coalface with me, Dave Robinson, and Alex. My name's Alex. Just one word, just Alex. Like Slay, Lenny. Uh, yeah, or Zendaya. Or Zendaya? Yeah. That's, well, that's a cockamamie name if ever I heard one. Yes, I got cockamamie into this podcast. I said I would, and I did, and you just threw it up, and all I had to do was that's, hit it. Uh, yeah, that's our, <laughs> our generation's, this generation's, not my generation's, I'm too old now, Beyonce, I guess. Do you know what's really funny, um, as an older guy, is listening to young people talk about how old they are. I listen hmm. to Jeff Norcott's podcast, a comedian, he's in his like 40s, 46, something like that. And he just keeps, oh, I'm so old, I'm middle-aged, I'm so old, I'm so old. And like, Jeff, mate, you know, you're, like, you're, you're 46, you know, like, get over yourself. It's just like, and then you, you're what, like 32? Uh, I am 32, you're well remembered. Surrounded by youngsters and me, an ancient kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's all a matter of perspective, really, isn't it? Kind it? of, is. I, kind of young, is. Yeah, but... I mean, I might be ancient, but I've just spent the last uh, hour and a bit, hour and, yeah, hour and a bit, um, Talking to a um, journalist, the rural affairs correspondent from the Scotsman, mm. um, Catherine, and she's walking around Scotland doing a <clears throat> doing a, a sort of like looking at the rural communities right. and meeting people and all the rest of it. And because we got the problem with the Boyne Bridge, and I've been active in trying to get the bridge sorted out, she'd got in touch with me about meeting up. So I went down the bridge, and she rang me, said, uh, "I'm still in dinner, which is like an hour and a half's walk away." So I was on my bike. So I, well, I cycled to dinner, caught up with her, and um, we sp- and we, didn't, we just walked back, chewing the fat, and talking about uh, a boy and, and various things. And she's telling me about her adventures as she's now just just embarked on this trip around Scotland as the uh, rural rural affairs correspondent, so that she she can speak with um, authority mm. about rural affairs. It's she good is way of doing she, it. She, as it actually is from a farming family herself, I think. So she's she's already an authority on the subject in my book. But yeah, it was good. It was interesting. Yeah. Walking around Scotland is a brave choice, especially it, yeah. at this time of year. Yeah, that's right. And it did, and it, uh, it was absolutely pissing it yeah. down. It? You know, and it's, it's disappointing because it hasn't been yesterday. It was lovely, wasn't it? Was it yesterday? It was, because mm. the moon was out and you could see, I think, was it Jupiter or something right next to the moon? Was it Jupiter? I'm not sure. Oh. I'm, not, I'm not an astronomer or an astrologer. But was... You look like the sort of person who should be. What? Which one? <laughs> Careful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You you tread carefully there. So have you made notes for this week's uh, digital marketing oh, from the call first, or are you just winging it again? I would never come to this podcast unprepared, David, as you well know. Yeah. Well, bear in mind, you know, Leslie's filming, so <laughs> she is trying to get some snippets for TikTok and things like so that. So we'll see if she can capture me sort of desperately spinning for ideas. It's a... Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I've so got a few. You just do your usual. You just look at my notes from all that you've learned how to read upside down. <laughs> you'll nick my ideas, steal my thunder, okay. and leave me with nothing to say. I might be able to read upside down. I definitely can't read that upside down, whatever it's meant to be. I think there will be a lot of crossover just because we have been. Well, I have started taking my bitching, notes in hieroglyphics so that you can't read them upside down or make any sense out of them. We have been bitching a lot this week, so I imagine that there will be some crossover in our notes anyway. But yes, I do have some things. Are we gonna make, it's not going to be totally morning, is it? This no. Time? I mean, well, you know, I think people come to expect it of us, but I don't think we should just. <laughs> I don't think we should just fall we should over try and, and do keep some delivering it. Informative stuff. Well, I have something that's non whingy to start us off, if you want, which is mainly just start us off. I was just about to say thanks for listening and look forward to speaking again next week. And with all that nonsense at the start, we've got no time left. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, go true. on. Um, no, it's just a couple of days ago, um, Forbes published a really interesting article, um, and it was just about how Gen Z, which is, you know, talking of youngsters, um, the generation or two below me, I always get very confused. I think it's two generations below me. Um, they don't really use Google anymore. So Forbes are basically saying that when they charted it, it's sort of like 62% of that generation actually use TikTok to search the internet. And another 62% use Instagram. And then, how yeah. do they use TikTok to search the internet? Do you mean they search so TikTok? They search TikTok, but they think that they're searching the internet. He didn't say that. Well, that's the thing. I was confused. So instead of going to our listeners would have been confused. <laughs> so instead of going Apologize. to, I'm very sorry. Right, listeners. go on. Try harder. <laughs> I think most people would have understood what I was saying. But no, it's like if you've got a question or a query, we go to Google. That's our sort of generation's thing. We Google things. Um, but they don't if they want to know how I to do something. I look in the paper. Yeah. I don't use yeah. Google. Got at library, get encyclopedia. Go to library, look in paper, me. and then ask me mates. <laughs> do you have an encyclopedia? <laughs> Britannica. <laughs> <laughs> All 40 volumes or whatever mm. it was. Um, but no, it, it's really quite interesting. So they're basically saying that like... But, 
studying people's behavior, 62% of, of Gen Z will actually, if they want to know something, they want to find something out, they have a question to ask, they just go straight to TikTok and type it in there. And then another 62%, and there is a caveat in the article that says you the numbers go up above 100 because people search using multiple things. Yeah. After TikTok, they'll go and use Instagram, which baffles me, but apparently mm. is an actual thing. And then Google yeah. is sort of way behind in the low 50s. And it, it's just well, quite, Google will know this as well. Well, they, well, Google admit it. So they say that they're, they have a youth engagement problem. They say that about 40% of young people use Google. Mm. That's it. From there, like looking across all generations, um, but I think it's quite interesting. The that even the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, even the people who are sort of like, I guess Gen Z will be what, like twenties now. But, I have no idea. And 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 sort of moving into positions of importance in business, and and sort of starting to, you know, become the the buyers and the people that we're marketing to, but they're not using the search engine that we think they are, or that a lot of people assume they are. Mm. And I guess it's really just, you know, there's that. And then there's the whole thing going on at the moment with AI and Google rolling out a new helpful content update. And, you know, by by the time this goes out, I guess probably it will have finished rolling out. But, I mean, that helpful content update has been a spectacular failure for a lot of people. You know, they're saying, oh, search results now are just full of sort of Reddit and Quora and there's no actual content on the internet. You know, you can't find any sort of articles. And it's just quite interesting because I guess Google have got these two opposing pressures. They've got all this AI content appearing that's sort of making it very difficult for them to serve up good search results. And they've also got the fact that lots of younger people are just moving away to different platforms. And I guess... Quite a few times this week, I've heard people say things like, oh, I've been told I should do some SEO and and stuff like that. Mm. And it's just quite interesting because I think a lot of people who run businesses who are maybe moving towards digitalization or thinking, how can I make the internet work for me? Their first assumption is still, oh, I'm going to go do some SEO, the tactic. And actually, that might not be the best idea for, you know, in the near future. Mm. That could actually be a very poor decision. So yeah. it was quite an interesting thing, really. What I thought was quite interesting was that uh, at one point in that term tirade, <clears throat> you you said this is quite interesting, and then went on to say something that was not interesting. Ah, here we go. I just thought that was dishonest. <laughs> well, it as well. And I, I looked it up on TikTok, and TikTok <laughs> agrees with me. You were being dishonest. <laughs> point is, I guess that yeah, tactics that have been historically a really good investment might not be for much longer. You really do need to think about these things. The changing tide of digital marketing. I mean, but I think we're at a, digital marketing is always changing. I think we are at a moment of pretty pretty seismic change. I think the landscape will look very different yeah. in a year's time. Yeah, and I may have to pay for that when in a year's time you're like, do you remember when you said everything would be different and it's actually the same? But there yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, a huge fan uh, of TikTok, and I've said this mm. before. Um, and Leslie patiently sat over there taking photographs and, and doing various things. Um, you know, we, we do need to sit down with Leslie and figure out how we we contribute to the TikTok ecosystem. Mm. I had to think then. I nearly said ecosphere. Yeah, that well, would have been new, wouldn't it? it I think, I think I'll have thing, that. I'm having buzzword. that, the ecosphere. <laughs> uh, I think we do need to figure it out. And almost without exception, almost without exception, the stuff that I enjoy is, guess what, educational and... Funny. Funny, entertaining. Yeah. Not always funny, but certainly entertaining. And yeah. this kind of magic formula, it's not magic, this formula of entertaining and interesting and educational, is, is it's just a fantastic... It, I think so. I think so. I think... Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about the... Um, obviously, by the time this goes out, um, the, the work we've been doing for our client in, in Edinburgh who, who look after people who have property, rental properties. Yes. Um, I, I, I talk about that in a roundabout way because we do have a kind <laughs> of unwritten rule them. where we don't yeah. talk about specific clients in our podcast. We talk about stuff we're doing for yeah. clients. We don't talk about the specific clients. Um, we were actually doing some um, van back of van type things and you know that's exactly what we've done for them yeah. we've told a really really cool story it's a little bit educational it's entertaining it's short. it's a twist on on the it's a sort twist of common way that, that on that on what we know that yeah. their ideal customers want um to know before yeah. they before they engage so um so it, it yeah it doesn't have to be grandiose this idea yeah. of entertaining and, and educating it can be it can be a five second snippet of video you know it, it, 
TikTok learns what you're interested in or what yeah. it thinks you're interested in because of what you looked at. So be careful. Yeah. Um, you know, but it, it throws me lots of golf stuff because I do sure. look a lot of golf videos because I'm, I'm, I'm quite, quite a keen golfer. Um, and it, you know, but, it, but it's not just that. I mean, I've, I've learned loads of digital marketing stuff. Yeah. I've learned loads yeah. of, uh, what else? What else? What else? You know, philosophical stuff, stuff that makes you just kind of stop and think and, um, software stuff and, yeah, you know, music stuff as well, mm. you know, guitar stuff, drum stuff. And I, I mean, I know there's a, there's a lot you could say um, about TikTok, which is not good. I mean, there are concerns about how involved in it the Chinese government are. Sure. We'll probably find out now because I'll probably disappear yeah. after saying it, after <laughs> even saying that. Um, so there's the, the, you know, there are concerns about that, but you can't get away from the fact that it's just rammed with great content. It is rammed with great I'm content. I'm fairly I, new to it as well. I'm like a year or so at yeah. all. I, I think, I mean, but I do think the volume of content on there is one of the things that put, certainly puts me off sort of like when I'm thinking about ways that we could start leveraging it, you know, digital marketing. I mean, there are no shortage of people in that space oh, yeah. on TikTok doing digital marketing yeah. tips that are funny. And I, I think that's the same for a lot of businesses, isn't it? The hurdle is really sort of yeah. not I want to be involved, but yeah. how to be involved in a way that actually stands out from the crowd and isn't yeah. just sort of oh, there's, there's a lot of people on TikTok getting it spectacularly wrong. Yes. You know, they're being really serious and earnest. And I've got to be honest, I've, I can now, I'll swipe Within a second, I can yeah. tell instantly yeah. bullshit and just swipe. Yeah, well, it's like LinkedIn, right? If you remember when LinkedIn was introduced, everybody was like, "Get on LinkedIn, do some videos, write yeah. some thought leadership," and yeah. then it really, like, it got stale really quickly, and yeah. you just got used to sort of mm. scrolling past everything. And I think yeah. that's the problem. Yeah, I think a lot of businesses are wary of sort of being seen to be just chasing the mm. the zeitgeist, as it were. Mm-hmm. There yeah. we go. We got zeitgeist and cockamamie into our podcast. We're only ten minutes in. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. We haven't got paraphernalia yet. Oh, well, I mean, technically. Oh, I just did, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I mean, one of the things that I've got on my list, um, like I'm going to try and keep this upbeat and not ranty. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the things I've got is uh, a little to- a little chat around the, and it's not just agencies like us. It's not just agencies, full stop. It's not just professional services. I'm talking about the extra stuff that you do for your customers, mm. whatever business you're in, that they never see. You know, so when you you, you, you can't capture it, yeah. you can't really report on it. So a simple example for us would be, uh, let's say I'm working on some strate- something strategic, mm-hmm. a strategy piece for one of our customers, and I really need somebody else's input. So I kind of play around with it for a while, and I say, right, I want some people. So three or four other people will sit around the table with me and, and listen to what I've got to say, you know, throw stuff back at me, mix some ideas up, that Tell kind of thing. Tell you how stupid you're being. Yeah, all of that stuff. usually. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, they'd be, and normally right. They, they would almost <laughs> certainly be correct. Um, but that stuff, you, you, every business does it. Mm. And I, I, you know, to contradict myself, maybe we do it more than, than other businesses. I mean, I don't mean Red Evolution do it more. I mean, agencies maybe yeah. do more of this unseen thinking and, and, and agonizing that we do for our customers. And all they see is the end result, the, the web page, the piece of content, the video, etc. I mean, Leslie's again, so Leslie's sat over there. I mean, when she's putting videos together and it turns into a 45 second video, you know, I think clients would kind of understand. It probably took a bit longer than 45 seconds to put it together, but yeah. they might not appreciate it. it took six hours to put it together. You know what I mean? It, it's anything in the creative industries and is just I'm so sure, difficult. Yeah, I'm sure that architects, for example, or lawyers probably have this as well. Like j- any job that involves a lot of just, thinking. The other unwritten rule, we don't mention our clients and we don't use the A word. The architect's word. Yeah. yeah. Not we, people. Any architect we've ever worked with has been an absolute pain be, in the ass. There might be architects listening to this right care. now. I don't care. I don't, and they're probably lovely people, but we have never worked with a firm of architects <laughs> who, who were actually great to work with. Yeah, it's true. They were always penny pinching, unreasonable, picky, impossibly difficult to work with type people. Well, now you've truly lovely, blown it, haven't you? Lovely people, charming people, <laughs> but no, no, no thanks, not as clients. <laughs> but no, but you know, the, the, any job where there's a, a significant sort of cognitive overhead where you're going to spend a lot of time thinking about a solution before you can zero in on it. Which is most of what we do. Right. 
and and I think people really do underappreciate that. And I don't want to make it a sort of uh, anarchist, sort of anti-capitalist rant, but I do think it's got something to do with the fact that we, in general, the society we live in only really cares about things and commoditizes everything. And when you get something like this, where it does, I imagine it's actually must be the same in advertising too. You know, where you you, you spend hours coming up with an idea, but all the client sees is the idea, the thing, and and that's all they really care about, and they don't really understand mm. the work that went into it, and maybe. Maybe that doesn't really matter, but it's certainly quite challenging, I think, sometimes. I mean, there's been instances, I mean, not even in terms of like creative stuff, but there's been instances recently where like clients have asked me to investigate something in a very offhand manner. They're like, oh, you know, for whatever reason, we've lost some rankings on this keyword or, oh, we've, we've noticed that we're getting sort of 10% less leads than we used to this week. Fewer leads. Fewer, sorry. Was, yeah, you're right. That was bad. <laughs> But and and they say, oh, just you know, can you can you work out what's going on? And and the bit they don't see then is the sort of like several hours of investigation where you sort of unpick all the different things it could be, and you look through all the stats, and you you try and hone in on what's happened or what is happening. And all they see at the end of it is you you know you come back with an answer, and they're like, all right, thanks, that was you know, I asked you to do something, you did it, not you know, not that took three or four hours. Mm. And I, I think you're right. I think a lot of that goes unsaid because you don't really want to be the people that are saying oh you know we've done a three-hour meeting like you say you know we sit down around a table with you know a, a client sort of website open in front of us and spend three hours talking about it we don't want to be the people that go running back to them and say oh look 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 how hard we worked but then it does mean maybe that people don't understand we do it mm. yeah 100 percent. your turn my turn you've got no ideas have you i've run out now no <laughs> that was one idea <laughs> I came prepared can you with an idea. Can you believe this clown? He turns up to a podcast with one half-baked cockamamie idea. Oh, cockamamie twice. Twice in one, in one minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about SaaS companies that keep pestering you to unlock feature XYZ? So we use HubSpot. We love it. Hmm. And in HubSpot, you know, you've, they're not too bad in that when you're in there, they show you menu items with a padlock next to them. So oh, you haven't got access to this. <laughs> but others are like in your face pop-ups, like unlock this feature, unlock this feature. This, I just find that I just, it's become hackneyed and tired for me. Again, again, I really don't want to turn this into a sort of anti-capitalist rant, but that is... That's where we're going, isn't it? I mean, this isn't this isn't unique to SaaS products anymore. I, I think it definitely started there. Or that's Don't like, mention BMW. Well, you mentioned it last week. It, yeah, but it's everything. It's <clears throat> that process. It's everything. It will be soon. It absolutely will be. <laughs> when you have to pay to get into court. Everything's quite a lot, you know. <laughs> it's, you mark my words. <laughs> when, you, <laughs> okay. when, you're trying to when you're trying to turn your light on and it's like, oh, actually, hold on. You haven't, you haven't paid for a, a premium Evo or what, Ovo subscription. I, you mark my words. That's where we're going. No, I, I think it is really bad. And I think it's really bad because a lot of clients will, certainly on, on the HubSpot thing or the SaaS software thing, a lot of clients get very excited about buying into this software mm. and, and all the things that it's capable of and how much fun they're going to have using yeah. it and then realize that certain features are locked. And and the thing that's really disappointing from my end with that is that suddenly they go from being very excited about some, you know, a new marketing technology to being very disappointed. Mm. And then you have to sort of feel that. And I, I get it. I 100%. You know, if I felt like I'd been missold something, I'd also be fairly annoyed. Yeah. But it's not, they're not transparent with it a lot of the time. Well, we've all. got a new uh, customer who we, we haven't actually agreed um, any sort of fees. We haven't actually invoiced them anything. Um, but we are quite embedded in their organization mm. as we try and figure some stuff out in order to head in the right direction with them. And they were, they were, they came to us already having um, a free trial of HubSpot yes. set up. Now, remember with HubSpot, you can use it free of charge forever. Mm -hmm. The CRM is free and some of the other, you can actually build a website. Uh, you know, it'll have, it has build, HubSpot logos. It has all HubSpot over it, logos. Yeah. Not just at the bottom. It's actually okay. Yeah. I mean, for, for like club sites and, and freebie stuff like that, it's fine. Um, but what they need is um, Marketing Pro and they want to move away from WordPress, mm -hmm. smart move, and, and put their website into HubSpot as well. Yeah. But in conversations with HubSpot, HubSpot have persuaded them that they need Sales Pro and they need um, uh, Service, is it? 
Right, yeah, service, service product, hub. Yeah. Service hub. Yeah. They don't need service yeah. hub and they don't <laughs> need sales hub. They do need marketing pro and they do need or could could benefit from CMS. Um, mm. and, and that comes down to the people at the uh, vendors, people at HubSpot or whoever it is, Pad or Marketo, or whoever it is, they are only there to sell. And, yeah. and you know, and this 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 is a new client of ours, a really interesting business, uh, a real go get a business guy, and um, you know, he's already jaded mm-hmm. with HubSpot's approach. Now, you know, they're a billion dollar company, they're a successful company, but they have been, I think, something you said to me last week, they have been plagued with. Um, being in a situation where there's a lot of people in the in the platform on the platform rather who were missold it, yeah, and they're continuing to do that despite what they say about not wanting to do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, th- this is the thing, isn't it? I mean, like t- to be honest, I mean, we you know chat about that conversation I had with HubSpot because I, I think it is. I don't know quite how to frame this. We chatted about it last week, didn't we, or did we not in the well, podcast? Well, no, because it only happened a couple of days ago. It only happened yesterday. Yeah. No. I spoke to a Tuesday. Spot. Yeah. It's Thursday. Well, yeah. <laughs> At the call face, where we lose track of time. Um, no, I mean, the point is, I, I think with HubSpot and all of these companies, they talk a good game, don't they? This is the thing. They, yeah. You know, the, the, the sort of allure that they offer, the sort of like, oh, don't worry, you know, we, we have all these fantastic features, we have all this brilliant technology, we'll usher you into our sort of world and it'll be fantastic and you'll get to use all of these fun things. And then, yeah, the reality is a lot of it's quite predatory under the surface. Mm. Um, mm. Certainly with it's like... a big word. It's a, a strong word. Yeah. Predatory. I, I think it is. I think it is. I, I think I don't... <laughs> I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think because the thing that's challenging is I think it, it's unfair because it, it it's often targeted at people that just don't know any better. I mean, that client in particular is a really good example of this. You know, you go into this stuff thinking that you've got your eyes wide open and you very quickly find that you're sort of be, you know, being asked to put your credit card information in for this and put your credit card information in for that. And, and it's the same on the agency side too. I mean, we are very strongly encouraged to sell the software to yeah. people, not necessarily people who need it always, like you say, because, you know, you have to keep up with your, if you want your partner status, you have to sell a certain amount yeah, every and year. Yeah, and goody two-shoes alert, we have never, yeah. ever missold HubSpot and we would never, ever missold, missell HubSpot, no matter what the attraction was financially. But that is also why we teeter on the brink of losing our gold yeah. partner status, yeah. because we don't really play that game. We don't play the game, I know. And, and there is a sort of expectation in our industry, and I think that's something a lot of people who, when they first start working with digital marketing, marketing agencies just aren't aware of that, that, that actually a lot of agencies are incentivized mm. to sell you things that you don't necessarily need yeah and, and that's sort of how their business is propped up and yeah. it's the same for hubspot to be fair you know hubspot exists because i imagine a, a fairly large percentage of its user base are paying for tools that they don't use very often yeah and that's that's just the unfortunate reality yeah i mean we've rescued a few sites where they well you know we've got ongoing engagements with customers right now where they're using a small percentage of what they're actually paying for inside yeah it it just it just has kind of come become a bit bash hub spot this i'm aware of that no i don't think it is i i think for me it's more just a sort of like make sure you're only going to use those tools if you're going to get the full use out of them and i think like the thing i would say about it is that an awful lot of business says could be bootstrapping everything using free software using the free versions of everything until they hit a size at which the convenience that something like hubspot offers it you know outweighs the the cost you know and it is just a convenience thing it doesn't like you need these technologies to grow your website you can literally do it with wix and, and you can and that's something you know that that's um that's a uh, what's it um i've i've pushed that point Mm. considerably over the years and I, I'd stand by it but having now gone all in on HubSpot website CRM marketing pro you know the whole kind of stack not sales we don't need it not service desk we don't need it um, operations we don't really need either but we've gone all in on the bits we need yeah um, and it is great it's seamless it's it, convenient it just yeah. kind of works it, uh, yeah I'm, I'm a fan I am a fan so despite everything we say about HubSpot I guess what we're saying is it's a great system we love it we encourage people to use it we encourage people to buy the bits of it that they need we kind of dislike the way that it continues to be missold and people who benefit from flogging it because they get a commission or they get a pat on the back um, you know are, are 
getting businesses, sometimes small businesses, to spend money they can ill afford to spend on software they don't need. And that it just, it just pisses me off. Yeah, yeah. but it, it, that, I think that's exactly it, isn't it? It's going with your eyes wide open and going, making sure that you're actually going to make good use of it as well. I think that's the other thing that's really important because, mm. you know, with the best will in the world, if you're going to pay, you know, two, three grand a month in subscriptions for something, you've mm. just got to make sure that you're actually going to put the time and the effort in. Because, we, And we found this, to be fair, you know, there were times when in the, in the dim and distant past, we didn't put that much effort into HubSpot and we didn't get that much out of it. We were still paying them. And, and I think that's the thing really, isn't it? So you have to be making a concerted effort to actually leverage those tools. I kind of liked what you just said there, but I don't, I don't hear a single. A single? Yeah. You don't remember that? Is that Tom Petty or? No. I don't hear a single. You know, it's like, here's our demo tape. Yeah, uh, listen to yeah, it. <laughs> oh, I'm, not, I'm not hearing a single. <laughs> Did I you, missed the point. Can you still get... Did you, what, what's, no. what's the equivalent to a single these days? Because no, vinyl's coming back, isn't well, it? Think, Are they going to do 45s as well, or is it only 12-inch? I don't know. I think it is big. You know, they've put it back into the basket of goods. <laughs> yeah, it's in the, part of the uh, consumer like, inflation cons- index yeah. now, isn't it? They, like, put it <laughs> they, put, they put vinyl back in. Yeah, and they took dehumidifiers out, and I was like, all right. All right. No, they took hand uh, gel, you know, sanitizer <laughs> yeah. out. Because of COVID. Because of COVID, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah funny right. yeah. it's a strange world um i don't know what people do now i think they just release tracks mm. i think that's what we call them mm-hmm. yeah have to ask the kids um what about typography uh, getting phoned in yes so <laughs> we did some work we did some work for a really cool company uh last year yeah. Uh, that when when they engaged with us, they'd already engaged um, a branding company to mm. do rebranding for them, and they've done that. Um, and I think bits of it, bits of the branding are okay, and some of it's like, why have you used a font that you can't read? Which mess. to me seems fundamentally a bad idea. But anyway, <laughs> um, but when we looked at the website, set aside, <coughs> sorry, set aside <coughs> funky fonts. A bit yeah. of alliteration. I haven't done any was, alliteration. That was good. So set aside funky fonts, um, the typography, the typography on the website, and then the closer we looked at it, just the general lack of attention to detail blew me away. Yeah. It just, I just thought, why would you invest in a cool new brand, go through the exercise of completely rebuilding your website, mm. using this new brand, and then let let the whole thing down with some really shoddy typography and really shoddy layout center issues. text yeah. center text and a, a, centered <laughs> sprawling text <laughs> the the devs if they ever listen to this is that <laughs> classed as alliteration person with a degree in english centered no. sprawling no because it sounds the same it does sound the same is it not kind of pseudo alliteration is it like Almost a, alliteration. Like a, oh, like a half rhyme. But, yeah, that's good. Very clever. Right? You think you're on a you're operating on another level today, eh? <laughs> um, center text is a crime against you. You know, like balloons when they get like a tiny little puncture and they kind of over it over about around. thirty seconds they just deflate. Oh, right, I'm going to yeah. do that in a yeah, minute. Okay. It's because okay. I had a Red Bull. <laughs> After I got back from my walk, I had a Red Bull, and so that's why I'm bouncing off the ceiling and bouncing around a little bit. It'll all end in tears. Some agencies hoover up lines of cocaine when they want to work. <laughs> Us, Red Bull. <laughs> you know you don't come in on Tuesdays, you work at home. Oh, what? That's the cocaine day. That's the cocaine oh. day. I'll have to have a go. I'll have to come in, surprise you all. <laughs> you did come on. You, no, you didn't. You came in on Wednesday, Wednesday this week when you don't mm. normally come in. Yeah, so, again, it's not a rant. It's just like... You know, like um, you've all you've done this. I know I've seen you do it, and I've certainly done it. You're writing some content; it's going really well, and then you just get bored with it. So you kind of go, and it's like it's descriptive, it's great, and then it just goes the end. fizzles out. Absolutely, <laughs> and it, it looks to me like that's what's happened with this probably significant mm. investment with this website, and it, it is actually built on HubSpot. Here's an odd. Um, you, you know, it's kind of like. When you first look at it, you think, oh, that's pretty cool. And then you start scrolling and looking in more detail. And it's like the, the lack of attention to detail and the sprawling centered text and, and text overlapping images when it shouldn't be. It's fine if it should be, but it's like it shouldn't be. Stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and it, and the funny thing was, I, I almost wrote uh, an email. I almost wrote an email saying, like, really like where this has gone, but it really needs a professional <laughs> touch to finish it off, or it, le- it needs a like somebody with an attention for, uh, with attention to detail to finish it off, and decided not to send it, and then 
saw a post on LinkedIn. Yeah, where, being like, oh, I'm like, really like, proud I'm of our new... so pleased with our new... And I'm, I'm really glad I didn't send that email because I'm just not going to get into that. But that's the thing that I think is really interesting because there, there could be a few things going on. We, let's not lie, in our industry in general, people often leave stuff until deadline day and then fucking... I know you do. Well, yeah, and then rush to finish it. And that does happen with websites, unfortunately. It shouldn't, but it does. And, and that's one thing that could have happened there is that they, you know, they blew their brains out making a nice new brand or whatever and then started building the website and then was like, oh, shit, we need to get this live in a couple of days and rushed it. And that that's possible. But I don't know. I, I think there's something else at play that, that I don't really know how to navigate, which is, like I was saying to you yesterday, or today, I think, that I was chatting to my friend who's a mixing engineer um over the sound engineer he's a sound engineer you'll know the he's terminology. a really good bloke he's an engineer and, and he's sound. sound you'll know the terminology better than me sound engineer i think yeah right. and he does a lot of mixing he does a lot of mastering we were talking about mastering services and he was saying one of the things that really annoys him is that there's an ai mastering platform on the internet mm-hmm. that will basically you give it your track and within about two minutes it will quote unquote master it yeah and it's bad but loads of people use it including like big brands like Disney and Sony and because they can't tell the difference. They can't hear the difference. Yeah. So they think, oh, that's fine. And yeah. a professional sound mm. engineer will listen to it and think that is atrocious. Yeah. But, yeah. And I think the same thing happens all the time in our industry too. Mm. It's just that people who cannot see the difference between a good website and a bad website are the key decision maker or have the final say or and, and they'll let stuff past completely missing the fact that people who can tell the difference are going to sit on the other end of that and be like mm, i don't want to work with these guys maybe they can't put their finger on why mm. but i think it's just one of those things like in music for example people with good ears are trusted because people say well i i can't hear the difference but they'll be able to and i want them to be the, the last person to touch it that doesn't happen so much in our industry mm. we don't say you know, I think it looks fine, but I'll give it to a professional just to make sure. And but you must, you must have been in a situation in your very short and uninformed life where <laughs> where something's happened. You know, 12. where somebody where somebody has said, "Listen to this," and they and they go, here's, you know, here's the first thing," and you go, "Yeah," and they and they go the second mm. thing, and they go, "Can you believe that?" And you go, "Oh God, yeah, that's awful," and you're like, "I have no idea what they're talking Absolutely. about." It sounded exactly the same to me. Yeah, but well, yes. So what I'm saying is, is good enough, not good enough for you but what but the, for the world well, in business if your website has got rough edges but people find it in google they, they go and visit it they go yeah okay they fill a form and they say give me a shout i've got a gig for you is that not good enough does it not does it matter if it's not perfect if, i think it does but i'm asking if I'm, if there I'm was asking a, you what you think if there was a gen zer in this conversation that had studied ux design at university or or cx or whatever they call it now they would sit here and waffle on about font sizes and micro impressions and you know the split second decisions that you make that you don't realize you're making i i'm not super sort of up on all that stuff i do think there's something to it i think you know m- maybe not quite so much sort of waffle and buzzwords but yeah i think people do notice things that you might not notice mm. and they do form very strong opinions about things on the basis of a misaligned yeah. image or- would you not think it's maybe like if it's if it's okay you look at it you go that's it's great but then if you see it cold and it's perfect you know, it's not okay. It's like wow, wow. yeah. Yeah, and that's what you know, is that what is well, it? Is it the wow that's missing mostly? I think so because I, I think it's the same as me, as music, isn't it? If you listen to a track for the first time and it's been like perfectly like mm. mastered and mixed and all of yeah. that stuff, and it sounds really good, you think Jesus Christ, what an amazing track. If mm. you don't, you you know, you, you just think yeah, that was all right, mm. and you can't always put your finger on why, but that lack of wow factor, I think, is is what will stop somebody doing business with you, potentially. They'll look at your website. I subliminally. Yeah. Yeah, Mm. absolutely. They're not Mm. going to consciously say, oh, that was sent Mm. to text, so I'm not going to work with I was just about to contact you about this fantastic (laughs) project that I'd like you to look at. Then I found a page on your website with sent to text. I thought, no, these are not the guys for me. (laughs) But but I think you can, and I think anyone listening to this will be able to do the same thing. If you think about websites you've looked at before, and you're sometimes just left with the impression that this isn't a professional outfit. And there are extreme versions. Define professional. Well, I'm talking about how it feels, really. I mean, it's. A, I just think it's a massively overused, much abused word. Agreed. Agreed. So, I guess, like... We'd like you to design our website, and we want it to look professional. 
yeah, trustworthy. Um, I, I, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. They, they, they feel like an outfit yeah. that you'd want to give a million pounds to and, and that they do a good job. And there are extreme examples of websites that feel unprofessional or untrustworthy, or like Ling's Cars, for example, or that sort of thing. Purposeful. For, pers- yeah, I mean, that one's on purpose for sure. But, yeah. but there are also, I think, just a whole load of websites that sit in this gray area in the middle where they're sort of good enough. They pass first muster, yeah. but they just you just left with the impression that uh, I'm not really super sold on that. But we went through that, I think, with the redevelopment of our own website, which although our new website's now live, it's mm-hmm. still a work in progress. He said, covering covering <laughs> his ass in case people go and look at it and go, well, he's saying all this stuff and he's, bre- he's breaking all these rules. Um, but uh, but the rule, yeah, that's. But when different. we were doing it. In its early stages, I, I, I was looking at it and I was saying, well, because I tried to keep out of it. And I was saying, that, you know, but I was finding myself needing to say there's something missing. <laughs> and there was, wasn't there? There was there something was, missing. Yeah. It, it just didn't have the wow factor. It just, I it, think it has yeah. now. It has now. It's got something special. And But although I am not a, um, a trained user interface, typography, mm. whatever, I, I, I am not trained, but... I have over the years sort of developed an acute sense of what is and isn't good from a typography point of view. And I, yeah. I look at a web page. I, I can almost look at a web page as a picture. Yes. And if it doesn't hang as a picture, yeah. and I'm talking like the words and everything as one sort of amorphous yeah. mass, if it, I can, it, it, you can tell straight away when it when it looks crap. Wrong. Now, if it's yeah. if you're in a niche where people, you know, where you you've got something that not many other people can do. People will tolerate like a, an, an awful website because you can solve their problem. But if you're not in one of those niches, it's I think it's worth spending the time to make sure that nobody can say, "Well, I went to your website and like to be honest, I couldn't even read it. The font was weird, yeah. or I couldn't, you know, I couldn't <laughs> actually, the menu didn't work on my phone." Or all right, we're getting oh, the menu we're wasn't particularly other areas easy to use. Now, but, but, but well, no, I'm, but I think you make a really good point, which is about tolerance, isn't it? Once. It's like if you if you're the only person that provides a, a given product or service, your website may yeah. succeed in spite of itself. Yeah. But let's not mistake that for you know. If somebody puts your website up on one of your competitors' websites and theirs yeah. just feels slightly more polished, there's every chance that they'll be left with the impression that, oh, those guys were a little bit better than yeah. those guys. And you, you can't control for that. And mm. you certainly can't change it after it's happened. No, so that's right. Yeah. Okay. You did mention, uh, just to wind up, you mentioned AI, um, like uh, an AI tool that does the job of a sound engineer. Yes. Just just to finish off, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Grammarly. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure you <laughs> are, but I, I do like Grammarly. It's all um, right. I, I find it useful. It kind of keeps me on the straight and narrow a little bit. But I was using it a few times this week. And, it, you know, using it, it's obviously got artificial intelligence built into it. And it just got in my way, mm. constantly got in my way, completely wanted to completely change the meaning of sentences and I just thought, like, what is going on? Um, you know, and I'm hearing it more from other people where, you know, after you've been wowed by how quickly <laughs> Chat GPT created a thousand words about, Turns you know, out blue widgets. <laughs> yeah. You know, now that, that this is not, this is not coming from a fear angle because I could not care less if, if we can't write content for clients anymore and get paid for it because AI does a better job. I couldn't care less. Do- but, it genuinely is just getting it spectacularly wrong. I would be thrilled if we could not write content because some computer software could do it better. That would be a brilliant world to live in. I just think it's not the world we live in. And Mm. weirdly, I think in a way, this is sort of the same point we were just making. People who can't tell the difference between AI-generated content and real content, just because you can't tell the difference doesn't mean that, you know, everybody else isn't sat looking at it and thinking that sounds awful. Um, I got into a fight on LinkedIn about this yesterday, actually, where somebody had said, that they sometimes used AI to grease their rightly gears. And I said, <laughs> I just commented on it and I just said there might be a direct correlation between people who like chat GPT and people who say things like rightly gears. <laughs> <laughs> and she was not impressed. But I, I think it's true. I think it's just that lots of people can't really tell the difference. They don't like writing. You, they can't be bothered. To that point, um, my business partner, the business in Australia mm. that I'm involved with, uh, Steve, and I've known Steve since we were at school. I love Steve to bits. I was his best man. Uh, he's he's a genius of a guy. He's, you know, he got a first class honors in mechanical engineering. Right, yeah. He got a distinction top of the class for his MBA that he did later on in in life. And he's just like probably the, one of the brightest people I've ever known. And mm. I love him to bits. But he. 
can't write. <laughs> he, 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 honestly, when he writes, it's, it's actually when he's explaining things sometimes to me, he's, he, he kind of, he starts sentences, then stops and goes back. Right. And, it, and he's, and he writes, he doesn't write well. He doesn't write well. And today we, we, we talk most mornings, uh, his evening, his, his afternoon, my morning. And today he said, yeah, I think we'll be okay using chat GPT because we're looking at some blogging yeah. and stuff like that for, for, for alert eyes. And he said, it would be all right. Cause I, I put some stuff in and I read it and it absolutely read fine to me. And, and I thought, <laughs> okay, it's that bad, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you're not, he you're... thought it was okay. But <laughs> to be, to be fair, he did say to me, like, you know, it'd be better if you're involved in it. Cause you do write, um, sorry. Yeah, you do write. Um, my, my style is is more sort of free flowing. It's it's not quite conversational. I don't suppose, but I try to keep things simple, and I think I explain things reasonably well. He doesn't really. Yeah, um, and I hope he's listening to this because he'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll shout at me next time we talk. Um, Bless him. <laughs> but it, it's coming from a good place. It's yeah. just making that point that you know, Chat GPT produced this content. He thought it was fine, but he actually himself doesn't write very well. So, but hey, and isn't that really the main point? Isn't that the key takeaway here? That you know, what we're saying is if you aren't very good at something acknowledge it and then let somebody who is really good at that thing just check that you're oh, not I see what a, you did there a secret ass of yourself yeah well, and, and i think that's the the thing yeah you, you're not necessarily the best person to say this website looks shit hot this this article is really well yeah. written and and getting other people's eyes on it can really mm. make the difference between you embarrassing yourself and mm. actually doing a good job mm-hmm so, speaking of embarrassing yourself, have you got any more drivel for today, or is I, that you done? I think I'm all out of drivel. Okay, that's um, that's sort of ranted on a little bit longer. Um, hopefully, you've enjoyed our little um, rants and conversations around uh, loosely around the subject of digital marketing from the coalface. Um, if you want to come on digital marketing from the coalface, uh, don't bother getting us in touch with us because we don't have guests anymore. We just like to do it ourselves. <laughs> So, um, sorry. Um, we we would if you were bother. interesting enough. Yeah, <laughs> that's, I know, that's the problem. I know. Uh, but we would be interested in, in any sort of comments and feedback. And if there's any subjects that you'd like us to cover, again, don't bother sending them in because we won't cover them either. Um, <laughs> we might rant about them for a few seconds. We might rant about them, that's right, <laughs> if they come up. Um, so, you've been listening to Dave Robinson, Alex Bussey from Red Evolution. Um, hopefully, we'll speak to you again, speak at you again, sorry, next week. Yeah, it's not a conversation, this. It's not a conversation. <laughs> it's well, it very is for one-sided. Us. Yeah. Yeah. These, these people just be nosy anyway listening to us <laughs> 